Here we go. Let's do this. Him and his mom both went missing. So my buddy is the UCAPI. So they probably know where the guys are. The kids, yeah. they just don't want to get out of here. Yeah. Josh's grandmother passed away. Josh didn't just go missing on his own. Him and his mom both went missing. Josh's mom's name was Rose. She was a very nice woman, but she had her secrets. Roughly 800,000 children go missing every year in the United States of America. Missing, missing, missing. That is about 2,000 per day, per day. 2,000 missing. My friend went missing, but I'm going to find him. Rose was always full of joy and very happy, always smiling. She never had a bad thing to say about anybody. She was very quick to join in, always wanted to help out. She even helped with some of our Christmas plays. She hand sewed some of the costumes. Stuff like this made it so that her and my mom became very good friends. It wasn't just Josh that I was friends with. The whole fa Both of our families were friends together. So it took a toll on us when they both went missing. I'm not just looking for Josh anymore. I'm also looking for his mom. So I went to the library to look at old newspaper records. I wanted to see if there's anything in the paper about Josh's disappearance. I figured we're a small town and a kid going missing might make, you know, the front page. So I uh, went through some of the records with the help from the librarian. And they had records all the way back to the 70s. I decided to check the records for January 2003 because that was right around when Josh would have gone missing. So that's like the most obvious choice. So when I found the actual tape for January 2003, we put it in the machine. Once the machine was on, we were able to start looking through the records. This was kind of interesting to go back and see old, old newspapers. I mean, it's only been 15 years, but still, it's part of my childhood and part of my history too. So we started going through it. And there was, there was a, a huge amount of stuff to go through. I mean, it was only one month, but still there was a lot of different pages and a lot of different records we had to look through. There were so many pages. We just had to scroll through them one page at a time. This was a bit tedious and took up a bit of time, but it was worth it if I could find anything. So while I was searching, me and the librarian got to talking about missing kids and whatnot. She asked if she might have known who Josh was. Sadly, she had never heard of him, and this got me thinking, had anyone in that time period actually known there was a kid missing? And as far as the papers could tell me, there, there was absolutely no proof that Josh was missing. There was absolutely no news articles, nothing. It was almost like the news didn't even know about it. I want to know, did anyone know that he went missing? Sadly, after looking through all the records, I couldn't find anything about Josh's disappearance. So, it's kind of strange. Um, as a kid, people, adults, always would tell me stuff that they wouldn't tell other kids. I don't know, it's weird. I always had like this power over adults where they would just tell me things. Like, there's this one time I was at Josh's house and we were playing like Power Rangers or something. And Josh's mom was sitting there at the kitchen table. And I walked in, Josh was in the other room, and she was writing letters to some guy, like some guy she met online, and there were love letters. And she was so excited about him, and she was so, you know, she, her face just lit up more than usual. And she was so excited to go meet this guy. A few weeks later, that's when they went missing. So I can't help but wonder, did she go to meet this guy online, and did something bad happen? And then that's, that's where they went? It kind of worries me now. Like, how many people go missing online from strange people they meet? Is that why they never came back? I wanted to do a little search for how many women actually go missing on from online dating. And, like, what are the statistics about that? So, 
Here we go. There are over 2,500 online dating services in the U.S. alone. 40% of Americans use online dating. More, than, more men use online dating than women do. 52.4% of men, 47.6% of women are online dating. Age can impact who you find, of course. 53% of people lie on their online dating profiles. Scams have been around as long as the internet. Of course, there are pitfalls and tripwires every sphere in every sphere of life, but this may be particularly true in the context of online dating. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, online scams. Could she have been scammed? Could whoever she went to meet be someone who was trying to scam her? Is that why they never came back? I can't actually find any statistics about how many women go missing from online dating. I feel like that's an obvious thing that should come up, but it's not. I'm gonna try searching how many women are dating men in prison. There's no numbers here either about how many women actually do this. Is this like a common thing? Are like lots of women meeting people through the internet and sending them letters in prison? Could that be what happened with Rosie? Was she trying to meet somebody in prison? Was she talking to some guy online who was trying to scam her? Honestly, there's so many outcomes to this of meeting people online. It seems kind of scary. I really hope that Josh and his mom are off somewhere living with some great guy who, you know, gave her the world and made everything better and everything's just amazing. But I have this gut feeling that it's something way worse. I don't know, stuff like this doesn't always go right. So that's why I kind of wanted to talk to a law enforcement person about this kind of stuff. So I have this friend who used to be a cop. I wanted to do a little interview with her to find out what exactly she knew about missing women, missing children, how the procedure worked, all that kind of stuff. Um, she didn't actually want to be filmed for this, so we did a interview over, uh, over some messages, uh, just because she didn't really feel comfortable being on camera with all the stuff we were talking about. So anyway, here's what she had to say. So I first asked her, how often did she have a missing persons case? Essentially, she wasn't actually in missing persons, so she didn't have all that many cases. So we have to remember that with these questions. How often were her cases missing women and children? Her response, women and kids do go missing more often than males. Usually foul play is involved, more than kidnapping in this area. I then asked her, in these kind of cases, how often are they found? She responded, they are technically found, but they are usually deceased. It's rare to find a missing person alive. My next question was, do women tend to just run away sometimes? She responded, usually women don't just run away. They stay and put up with the situation because they are either too afraid or brainwashed to leave. They think they have no choice but to stay. My next question, how long before the police consider someone to be missing? She responded, Police don't consider people missing until they have been gone for 24 hours. Then I asked her how long before someone is presumed dead. She responded, she responded, it depends on the circumstances. There are some cases in which training and experience gives the intuition that the person is dead, but legally they aren't presumed dead for seven years. This final question is a little gruesome, so prepare yourself. Some of the details are bloody and kind of dark and actually very dark. So I asked her, what is the worst thing that you've ever seen happen to a woman while on the job? Here's how she responded. I remember the worst thing I ever saw done to a woman. It still bothers me. It was on the news too. This lady is in her 40s, 
had moved from her home state to where we live to get away from her boyfriend. He was one of those, if I can't have you, no one will types. She had moved in with her daughter into one of the apartment buildings. The boyfriend tracked her down and waited in the parking lot until the daughter left for work. He kicked in the door and stabbed the woman multiple times. When we went into the apartment building, it was like a scene from a horror movie. There was blood spattered fucking everywhere. It started from the front door, all over the walls, floors, and ceilings. It led down to the bedroom where the carpet was soaked. She went on to pretty much tell me that they did sooner or later find the guy and it took six of their cops to take him down. That kind of scares me a little because if something like, something like that can happen here in my safe small town, anything could happen. It really makes me worry about what happened to Josh and his mom. My mom and I were friends with Josh and his mom. We did a lot of stuff together. We were great friends with them. And, at, like, nobody seems to remember Rose or Josh, except for me and my mom. So I really wanted to sit down and talk with her and see if we could piece anything together about what happened to them. So I sat down with my mom and talked to her. You were friends with Josh's mom, Rosie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what exactly do you uh, remember her? Like, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Rosie? Uh, uh, first thing I actually think of one of those fun-sized individuals. She was about the same height as me, same kind of build as me. And I think the two of us together just kind of tag-teamed up like that because we were both the same. And, you know, we both had one son and we were dealing with that. Um, but she was always very um, bright and joyful. Um, always kind of like laughing and, and uh, eager to try fun things and do activities and, and do stuff like that. Okay. Um, and do you remember when you actually, like the first time you actually met her? Do you remember how that went? You know, I remember um, I was children's pastor at the church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can't remember if it was Dorothy brought Joshua back to the back children's area first. Oh, I don't think Rosie did. I think it was Dorothy. And I met Joshua, and he was a doll. Absolute doll. And then I think it was afterwards they introduced me to Rosie afterwards. And uh, her and I just clicked. We just really, really clicked and just laughing. And, and she liked to, you know, have do fun things and mm -hmm. cook and bake and stuff, too. Okay. Um, and... So, you know, you, you were the children's pastor, yeah. and you were in charge of, like, the Sunday school and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, if I remember correctly, we did some plays and everything, me and Josh, and, and for church, mm -hmm. and uh, Rosie helped you with the uh, costume. Costuming, right? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she tried. She did a lot of the uh, the costuming, the, all the seams and all the gowns, and mm -hmm. she did all that. Yeah, she was very good. Mm -hmm. She was very, very good at it. And she, like I said, she was an integral part. She just jumped in and she helped out and and all of a sudden she was just so friendly. It was mm -hmm. an, an almost an immediately uh, quick friendship. Okay. Um, you, okay, so you said she was similar to you in stature. She was fun-sized. Mm -hmm. um, what like How else would you describe what she looked like? If we were trying to like find her, what would you um, say she looked like? Let's see. I want to say she had a round face. Um, big, kind of like she liked to do her eyes up big. And she liked to do her makeup up full. And her hair was kind of uh, curly, blondish, kind of. I guess it was kind of, you know, like she liked mm -hmm. to do different things with it. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I would say that's how I would, that's how I remember her, mm -hmm. is having the, the big makeup mm -hmm. and the, um, the curly, curly hair. Mm -hmm. And um, big smile. Big, big smiles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so... When um, when they actually went missing, mm -hmm. you were with me when we found out. Mm -hmm. Like, what was your initial thought when you found out that they just disappeared that night? Or what was your initial thought? Well, I wondered if something was wrong. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I can't remember totally. Um, Josh was a little bit, you know, stepped back um, the times before that they actually disappeared. Uh, he wasn't quite as... Um, 
exuberant in his and his you know go 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 he was kind of reserved and um just the the fact that when something something like that happens when you finally just kind of like just go and they disappear and nobody knows where they go i know dorothy was upset um very very upset and uh, i guess in my mind i had to there's something is going on there's something seriously going on that here I thought she was being part of the, the community, part of us, part of friendship. and But you also knew somewhere in the back that something wasn't quite right. Um, and so I just, I guess I kind of just stood back a little bit to listen to what everybody else was saying. Because I didn't know the whole story of, of their background. Um, but something wasn't wasn't quite right that they just they needed to just go and then just leave wherever they were mm -hmm. everything behind okay um like i personally remember that rosie was talking with some guys like she was writing love letters and mm -hmm. stuff um and like did you remember because i mean you know she i surprisingly people tell me a little bit yeah, more than i do most funny. children for some reason mm -hmm. um do you remember her talking about like a boyfriend or someone um <clears throat> i want to say i know there was some guy that she was writing that she was really excited about i don't know if he was from prison or if he was an online dating but it was somebody she didn't really know that well but they had been writing back and forth, and she was all excited about mm -hmm. it. Um, and so, but I don't know that that was a positive thing. Mm -hmm. But she was excited. Mm -hmm. She and I that that might have caused problems. Um, but she was all mm -hmm. excited about it, and the fact that you know there was there was there was somebody else that was yeah excited for her. Or yeah, she, and, excited in her. Yeah, and okay, but um. It wasn't really like Dorothy wasn't particularly excited about her writing some guy. No, oh, she was not happy about it at all. Mm -mm. So there's definitely there was some dysfunction there. Yeah, there was definitely some dysfunction. So, like, I at least from what I remember that it was more one of those things where it it wasn't like towards the end it wasn't it was surprising that they went missing, but it wasn't too far fetched. It wasn't like shocking because it was like they were starting to be get a little more. There's some agitation yeah. there, and there was definitely some um, abrasion there of, you know, no, don't do this, this you don't know enough, and, but I want to do this, and I'm a grown woman, and, you know, there's that, all that. You got a grandmother who is just devoted to her grandchild and doesn't want to have anything happen to him, but then you also have the mother and the child, and the mother's trying to take care of her and her child. Um... So yeah, there's definitely some 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 rough roads in there, mm -hmm. and that's that's to be understood. Yeah. Um, no, I mean especially because you know it was, you know Rosie was Dorothy's daughter-in-law. It wasn't her daughter. It was it was somebody that was, mm -hmm. you know, it was her son's girlfriend, wife, whatever. Yeah. And so it, it I guess it does make sense if she was looking into somebody else that it might cause a little mm -hmm. family dysfunction. Yeah. Um, okay, so you knew them both pretty well. Um, what exact, like, what do you think happened? Honestly, I think Rosie decided to take matters into her own hand. It was her and her son from the beginning. Uh, and she took that, and she took Josh, and she took him, and they went to uh, figure out about this, this guy that she'd been writing with. Um... Like I said, I don't know if it was a guy from prison or a guy online dating. Back then, it wasn't as big as it is now. Um, but I think she went to pursue it. Mm -hmm. And um, she had to do what she needed to do for herself. Um, and that's what she left. Okay. And I think they, it's a, a quandary that we don't know where they went because she just decided, I'm not telling anybody where we're going. Mm -hmm. Um it's not other business. I'm gonna do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened, and it's yeah. sad that you got to lose that um, friendship and that you know being able to mm -hmm. keep in touch with them, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, if since you and Rosie were friends, if you got a chance, to, 
if you could say like one last thing to her, what would you want to say? Um, <clears throat> oh man, um, I guess I'd say I understand when you got your son and you're taking care of him, you got to do what you got to do. I wish she'd been able to, you know, at least keep us in contact. So, um, just in case of emergencies, it would have been nice to have been able to say, hey, you know, I'm doing fine. Um, just one last word of saying, hey, I'm sorry, I got to go so that we don't have that lost feeling. That would have been nice. I don't know why Rose had to leave. There had to be some good reason. But I just hope that whatever happened, if she met some guy in line, whatever, I hope it all worked out for them. I hope that they're somewhere fine and healthy and safe and happy. If Josh or Rose are watching this, by some strange chance they see this, please just reach out. I'm worried. We worry about you. We just want to know you're okay. And if someone did hurt them in any way, and they happen to see this, just know, no matter what, someone is looking for them. And someone cares. And I'm not going to give up. I will find them.